My name is um, Dr. Akintoye Clement Okay Shokun. Um, I'm a dentist in private practice. And I'm also a businessman based in Johannesburg, South Africa. I came to South Africa in 1992 before the, the first election. So I was privileged to be part of the whole process of transformation here in South Africa. I was one of the first Nigerians to settle here in South Africa. And that has been a huge privilege because then it allows me to assist Nigerians that are, some Nigerians that are coming in, um, both financially and in kind as well. My name is Deborah Jegede from Ikiti State, Nigeria. I'm currently studying at Southern Party Health Science University. I'm in my fifth year of studies. I am a child of God, a firm believer, and I love studying because that's my passion and I am aiming to become a medical doctor in the future. I came to South Africa to study. I've been in South Africa since around 2009 as well, when I started my high school education. That was in the Free State. So I've been studying. I completed from the Free State and then matriculated and went to study in Limpopo, where I graduated in 2017. And I'm currently studying towards a medical degree in Sikapanikati. Being in South Africa, I think the main challenge is separation from family. Um, you have to form a new base, you're alone, facing studies, um, you know, those challenges, having to find, find jobs like assisting in um, university to try and at least try and earn some income by the side to try support my studies. For instance, when I was in the university, I would do work like residence work, and all those little, little incomes to try and put towards um, my education. So those are the main challenges, I'd say. I'm left with two years towards my completing my degree, and I have some academic debt uh, that has been lagging. So in order to help me complete and register for my current year, I have to cover my debt. So that's why I really had to reach out for I was approached by my one of my lecturers who told me about the Nigerian Doctors Forum and told me of people who could help me. But I'm an orphan, a single orphan. My dad passed away in 2004 and my mom is the one taking care of me and my siblings. So she's been helping and we've been having financial difficulties. So I really need the help to help, you know, Continue. I graduated from my first degree, uh, cum laude. While I was in my previous degree, I there was this research in my final year. I had to represent my um, group before the health department in Limpopo, and from that I came out first in the whole province. Uh, I got an award for that. It was a nice um, achievement. In my first year when I came also, or let me just go back also to my previous degree. Over the years, of course, I've had to earn a merit bursary to pay for my, uh, my studies. So every year I'd get the merit award, which would of course pay for my degrees and study. So of course that means I have to obtain distinctions in most of my subjects by God's grace, which I did, and which helped me fund um, my education. When I moved over to Sipaka Mahatu as well, I've been also, in my second year, I obtained an anatomy award. I obtained the award for best student in practice of medicine. In my third year, best student in pharmacology. Um, overall best student as well. So those are just to mention a few. My name is Uluwa Kalimi Abe. I'm a medical doctor. I'm also the Public Relations Officer of the Nigerian Doctors Forum. 
The Nigerian Doctors Forum is a forum of Nigerian doctors in South Africa. Our aim is to unite all Nigerian doctors in South Africa to promote the integrity of the medical profession and also to help our members in time of their need. I got to South Africa in 2009. I did my high school education in Victoria at the Glen High School. Then I went to university at it started as Midun Samuel University of South Africa on the University of Limpopo and then the name was changed to South Mahatel Sciences University in 2015. I graduated as a medical doctor at South Mahatel Sciences University. Then I did my internship at Fred Ben Hospital in Malanga. Then I did it for two years and one year I went to in um, the Free State to do my counsel. Last year, January, I was approached by Dr. Famoretti. Dr. Famoretti is a member of Nigerian Doctors Forum. He told me about a medical student who needed help in completing her education. He told me that the student was very bright, performing well in school, but then the student was having financial challenges. And then I agreed that the student could message me. And I was messaged by Deborah. She told me her story and she um, persuaded me to help seek funds for her. And I was touched by her story. I took her story to the Executive Council member of Nigerian Doctors Forum. And that's how the whole thing started. Me messaging the executive and it took about a year for all of this to come about because during the whole year of 2020, we had challenges in in, in Nigerian Doctors Forum with we losing some of our members and then there was COVID. So we got debated a lot and we had so many projects to run. But then this year, I Deborah reached out to me again. After reaching out to me multiple times, she was very persistent, I must say. And then I approached the executive members again and I spoke to all of them. And Dr. Uh, O.K. Sofen, who is the Vice President of the Nigerian Doctors Forum, took up the task in his hands and created the WhatsApp group, which is now the platform for the donation for the fund towards diverse education. The, there was um, one of our members, this, this is the Nigerian Doctors Forum thing now. One of our members, uh, of the Nigerian Doctors Forum, I think, if I remember his name, I think it's Dr. Famoroti. Uh, he approached the, the, the Nigerian Doctors Forum concerning um, a medical student who needed help financially. Um, I think she's in third year or four, fourth year. She needed help. Um, they wouldn't allow her to register because she's owing the university money. And therefore, they wanted to see what uh, there's anything the Nigerian Doctors Forum can can do to assist to assist her. So we discussed this matter in the executive, and um, we decided that it would be very nice to, to help her. But we have a, a few conundrums. The number one conundrum is that we we have an existing constitution in the Nigerian Doctors Forum that. It's not, you know, there's a general statement of helping the community, but there's no specific statement of raising money for a particular person uh, in, the, in the community. So we are worried that if we decided to raise money for uh, a person, then perhaps we are setting a precedence that we may not be able to, to sustain. Because now, it is De Deborah this time who happens to be um, a Yoruba young lady. And you know how ethnic issues can be quite sensitive amongst the Nigerians, not just in Nigeria, but also here in South Africa. So we just thought that if we decided to take it, make it a project of the Nigerian Doctors Forum to assist Deborah, what happens if somebody else comes along 
are we, are, will, are we going to be in a position to sustain it? Because if we raise for Deborah, can we raise for somebody else? Indeed, how many people are we going to have coming forward that would say that I also need uh, assistance for, for my education at varsity or at um, high school? So we debated this back and forth and we decided that um, it is better to assist Deborah um, without making her situation an official assignment of the Nigerian Doctors Forum because we, we, we are going to set a precedence we won't be able to sustain. By the time that I finished reading the email, I actually cried because I could um, relate to um, the story of this young lady. Um, I got help too in becoming a doctor myself. Um, she's not exactly from a poor background. I, I was, and I was sponsored, I was raised, sponsored by the community. So now seeing somebody here who such a bright young lady, um, she's already a medical student in her fourth year. And now she's having this struggle. Um, it touched my heart. So I decided that I was going to, uh, then I prayed about it. I just prayed about it. I said, Father, um, I wanted to take this on as a project, but I wouldn't do so if you don't give me the go ahead that you would surround um, this project with people who would donate. This same story, uh, the way it touched my heart, that it should touch their heart as well, that they would donate towards this young lady completing her education. So I prayed. I got got off my feet. The you know you know the God we serve. <laughs> the answer is go ahead. I mean, if you want to do it, I'm with you. So I just got up from the bed, took my pen, and then took my phone. And then started going through my contacts one by one to try to um, select friends, family, associates, or anyone that I know that might be able to assist in raising the money that we would need for this young lady to complete her medical education. And that's how the whole that's how the whole idea started. I compiled these names, then I formed the WhatsApp group. I didn't need to uh, reinvent the wheel. I didn't need to reinvent the wheel. The the message that. The, the email that she sent to me, that Deborah sent to me, I just posted that same uh, email on the forum. And then, you know, requested people, requested people to, to see what they can do to please, uh, to please our sisters. And that's how the whole the whole thing started. Um, so I, I put an email there on the forum. I wrote a message, a, a post, asking people to please read the email. And if and if they were touched the way that I was touched. Let them please assist us to be able to put the money together. And it's amazing that people responded. The, the response was, it, blew, it just blew me away. Um, most people that came on that forum donated. And um, you know, it's a, it's a common thing that when you put people on a group without requesting their permission, they leave. It's amazing that Practically no one left that group. I could remember one or two people that, uh, that left, 
but of close to 150 people that we put on that group, everybody stayed. Everybody had a word of encouragement to say, people who don't even have money or who haven't donated, they have very encouraging words to say about the project, how wonderful it is, how um, good it is to set up something like this to be able to assist one another. And it's not just, uh, it's not just Yoruba people, you know, it's Nigerians. And it's not just even Nigerians, South Africans as well. So it's been amazing that community can come together to, to look after ourselves, you know, to look out for ourselves and to look after ourselves. It's, it's amazing, it's something, something wonderful. First of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to the Lord God Almighty for introducing me to this amazing community. I'd like to pass my special gratitude to the Nigerian Doctors Forum in South Africa, the Odudua Health Professions Academy, the Nigerian community at large, both in South Africa and out of South Africa, all South Africans, to all South Africans, a special thank you to Dr. Kalumi Abe and Dr. Famariti for introducing me to this community. I'd like to say a special thank you to the Voice, Nigerian Voice magazine in South Africa. And finally, a special thank you to Dr. Clement Okeshuku for making this a possibility. I am grateful. Thank you. I don't have enough words to say thank you to everyone that have supported this Deborah project, that's, that's what I would call it. I want to say thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Those who are able to donate, you see we're in lockdown. Most families are struggling. Most people are on half salaries. Most businesses are, they are struggling to survive. And yet we have been, <laughs> My last count, we have raised more than 200,000 rands. I mean, that's a lot of money. We're talking of some 200,000 rands, like 6 million naira for this young, young lady. So I cannot thank you enough for all the sacrifices, for the labor of love shown to this uh, young lady at my instance, uh, at the instance of everybody that is involved in this. We have donations, not just in South Africa. We have donations coming from the UK. We have donations coming from, in, um, from the USA. Donations coming from um, Canada. Donations coming from Nigeria. I mean, it's so wonderful that people can come together to show love, to sacrifice, to a cause. Uh, I, 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 I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. You all have dreams, they all have dreams. Even if you don't, eventually you have a dream. When you have that dream, pursue that, that dream that you have. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let anything discourage you. We all have challenges, but challenges are there for us to overcome them. When you don't give up on your dream, you will actualize that dream. Doesn't matter what the challenge is, you don't have a support system, no financial system, no one to support you. Follow that dream and do your best, work hard, and also cry out for help. If you need help, don't keep quiet. Don't let anybody silence you. It doesn't matter how many no's you have. Eventually, you have a yes. In the coming years, of course, I'm working towards becoming a medical doctor. I initially wanted to become a neurosurgeon, but I think as the time goes by, I would be able to establish myself as a leech. But then, why I want to see myself is giving back. Giving back to all those who need help and all those who also need to reach where they are going to. I'd love to become an established um, young doctor who can look back and say, my journey has been one of the blessings on all those people that God has brought to my life to help me. And, you know, look back and give back and help people to reach and fulfill their goals as well. Work hard, work hard. It doesn't come easy. You have to put in the effort. Trust God as well. God is the sole source of our help. He's the one who sees us through. I know being an orphan, sometimes you judge yourself by your background, where you come from and say, I don't have 
the capability to reach where I'm going to. But don't let your background be what stops you from reaching your goal. Don't let your background stop you from aiming higher. So that would be my message to young people. Keep working hard, keep focused, keep determined. You will reach your goal.